Are we live? Please welcome to the stage oh P. Jilly. P. Jilly. Yeah, you said you were going to rap. Oh my god, that was not rehearsed. Had it been rehearsed, it might have been canned. <laughs> P. Jilly, because I'm going to rap. Anyway, hello everybody and welcome to the live beeswax wrap making tutorial. I'm quite hot and I think it's because I've got the hob on and the iron on. I've just got loads of heat sources. So anyway, it's fine. Um, have we got some viewers, Christopher? Shall I launch into my spiel or not? Shall I just give it a little momento? Um, Christopher's got himself a different microphone this morning. I think he wants yes, to be a bit louder. Watching. Yeah? Good. Okay. Live beeswax wrap making. Uh, we haven't got Betty here this morning because I kind of thought the small dogs and, and irons and hobs probably weren't a good mix. So she's at home. But um, I have, yeah, I've got... Um, an electric hob set up here so I've kind of turned my workspace into a hob and an ironing board so that I can show you everything. So I know loads of you have bought our kits and thank you for doing so. Um, we've got two different kits that we sell. Um, the first one has got the fabric in it and the greaseproof paper in it that you'll need uh, but I know a lot of you have bought what we call the refill kits which looks like this, which doesn't come with the fabric. You use your own fabric, but it comes with the, obviously with the beeswax and the resin, but it doesn't come with the greaseproof paper, but you get twice as much in here so you can make six wraps, not three. So what do you need to use if you've got the refill kit or if you haven't got any kit and you're wondering what to do? You need to use cotton, okay? It needs to be 100% cotton and it needs to be um, quite lightweight cotton. So don't use like heavy I don't know, curtain fabric or something. It needs to be lightweight cotton. I have to admit that um, I did um, wash this one first. So you want to get any like, you know, um, anything that's in it, a stiffener or starch and so sometimes in cottons that you buy when you first buy them, that needs to be gone um, and you need it to be ready to accept the wax. In case of you any, any of you are wondering what on earth you do with a beeswax wrap. I did have someone call me up the other day. I was like, I hear you're doing a tutorial for beeswax wraps. What are they? So, I mean, I'm sure you will know, but basically it's just an environmentally friendly version of cling film or ways of wrapping up your food and keeping it in the fridge. So, you know, you could wrap up your sandwiches or you could put it over the top of a bowl. Um, I like using them over the top of glass bowls so I can still see what's inside. It kind of irritates me if I can't see what's inside, but it's great for your sandwiches. I think the only uh, no, no is don't wrap things. Don't wrap it against meat or fish, like directly against meat or fish. I'm guessing it's a bacterial thing. Uh, but otherwise, great for using in the kitchen. If they get dirty, then you can just wash them under the tap with a little bit of washing up liquid, cool water. Don't use really hot boiling water because the wax would melt again. Don't put them in a dishwasher because the wax would melt again. So, yeah, you can wash them and clean them and reuse them. And then after a couple of months, if they lose their stick, you can like reheat them and uh, re, re or even put a little bit more wax on if you need to. OK, so um, I'm starting off with some fabric that I've cut. OK, because I'm using the refill kit and I've used some pinking shears to cut it. So you get this ziggy zaggy. If you just go quickly to the overhead shot, Chris, you get this ziggy zaggy edge, which works really well um, in that it doesn't fray. I mean, obviously, once it's turned into a beeswax wrap, this one's already been made, then you've got the wax over it. So it's not going to. But, OK, back to me. Um, sorry, human vision mixer. Just in case you weren't paying attention. Um, always use the pinking shears if you've got them. If you haven't, it's not the end of the world. It just might fray a bit as you're making it. That's all. So the refill kit, will make, well, I think it will make three wraps that are 25 centimetres squared 
per packet and you're getting two packets. Let me just show you what's in this kit. So they give you a lovely little information thing about bees and how to attract bees to your garden, which is very environmentally friendly and cool. And then that you get the instructions. And then you basically, you get two lots of um, beeswax wrap stuff. So you get the, whoopsie, you get the white wax pellets and then you get something called pine resin, which smells absolutely divine and will make your kitchen smell gorgeous. This resin takes ages and ages to melt. So I'm gonna to talk to you a bit uh, in a second about melting it all, but it does take quite a long time. You need to allow half an hour to make all of this melt, but you, you get your wax and your pellets and then you get another lot to do another three. So what you could do is make, what I'm trying to say is you could make some bigger ones, but less of them. As long as it's the same sort of square meterage overall that you're making, you can make whatever shape and size ones that you like. I'm just going to do these little ones here because I haven't got much space. Okay. Um, other things you're going to need. So obviously you're going to need your fabric. You're going to need what's in the kit. You're also going to need some sunflower oil, two tablespoons of sunflower oil. Um, we accidentally bought sunflower oil with um, extra virgin olive oil added, 15% was so posh. Uh, you don't need that, but it really doesn't matter if that's what it is. And in fact, someone was um, messaging me yesterday saying, oh, I only have olive oil or something else really posh. Oh, coconut oil, that was it. And I, I don't know about using coconut oil, but I think it's fine to use any sort of olive oil. I know that a friend of mine uses jojoba oil, um, but sunflower oil is probably the cheapest and it's just going to make it more workable. All right, so you need two tablespoons of that. You're going to need some greaseproof paper, okay? Uh, that's really important. If you don't have any greaseproof paper, get some. <laughs> or I guess you could use foil. I haven't tried it with foil, so I'm like saying that tentatively. So I don't know what might happen if you use foil, but greaseproof paper would be best. OK, then you're going to need a paint. I've discovered that using a paintbrush is the way to the way forward with this. The instructions for the kit actually tell you to use a palette knife, a wide knife like this. If you don't have any um, old paintbrushes to hand and it needs to be a clean one, then by all means, use the palette knife. OK. If you don't have a palette knife, I was thinking that you could probably use an old credit card, but but you would need to be really careful dipping that into the wax because it's going to be nearer to your fingers and you need to be really careful that you don't burn yourself. So I'm going to talk about a few health and safety things in a second, but some sort of palette knife or um, preferably um, paintbrush would be good. Um, and then in the instructions, it suggests after you've painted it on using an oven to set it for a couple of minutes. I don't have an oven here, so I'm using an iron. And I'm just going to show you how I iron it between two pieces of greaseproof paper. Again, I think it's quicker and easier than the oven. Um, so that's my kind of take on it. But by all means, go with the instructions and use the oven if you want to. And then I think that's it. And obviously the hob. So I'm just going to move this fabric out of the way for a second and I'm just going to put down my little bamboo mat onto here and just talk to you um, about my mixture. I'm just going to move it into shot. So is that in shot for everyone on Instagram on the overhead? It will be. Yes, okay. So as you can see I've got a glass dish, okay, that's heat proof, sat in a saucepan of really 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 hot water so it's just come off the boil so you don't want this boiling away you want it just simmering enough so that it melts your mixture slowly for about half an hour and then you're going to turn the heat off and or have it on a very 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 low heat and having this uh, bowl sitting on top so it's not quite touching the water but nearly will provide enough heat for you to mix all this together so this is actually probably about a packet and a half of the beeswax pellets, which are white, um, mixed with the resin, okay, which is very, very sticky to start with and takes ages to, to melt, as I mentioned earlier, and the sunflower oil. So it's all in here together. And as you can see, mine is now completely melted and is ready to use, all right? So I'm just going to give you um, um, a couple of sort of top tips on health and safety here. It's really important that you don't have this vigorously boiling and it gets really, really over, over hot. I'm not saying it could uh, spontaneously combust, but 
Um, obviously, there are issues, uh, and it, it is flammable because of the nature of what it is. So you just need to be a little bit careful when you're heating it up. OK, this is not for children. Don't let the kids too near it, because if anyone puts their fingers in this, it's, it's really, really hot and it will burn you. OK, likewise for adults. So, you know, make sure you're using an oven mitt when you're carrying if you if you need to carry this around and make sure that you don't put your fingers anywhere near it. OK, health and safety over. I've turned my table into an ironing board and a hop by putting some protective cloth on it because I've got a plastic tablecloth under here. So do be careful what you're working on as well. You know, use heat proof mats or whatever you've got to hand. So I'm just going to move this back onto my hob here just to keep it um, warm. And then I'm going to get my piece of fabric back. All right. So the other thing that you're going to need that I forgot to mention is a baking tray. So we're doing the whole thing on a baking tray. I've actually just got a tin tray here, but use a baking tray that you would normally put in the oven, a flat baking tray. The grease proof paper goes on top of that. And then you're going to put your first piece of fabric on top of the grease proof paper and make the grease proof paper big enough so that it will avoid you spilling any of the wax onto your cooker or your whatever because if you get the wax everywhere else anywhere else and you've got to peel you've got to scrape it off okay because it will solidify really quickly so what i've discovered here are my top tips what i've discovered is that if you don't have everything nice and warm as you're working, it will solidify the wax really quickly. So if you're in a very cold room, on a very cold piece of fabric, on a very cold tin tray, it's gonna solidify immediately and it's gonna be harder to spread it through the cotton, okay? But what I've discovered is that if I, very carefully here, health and safety, this is an iron, very hot, do not touch it. <laughs> if I iron my fabric on my greaseproof paper, on my baking tray, it will heat up my fabric slightly, okay? It will heat up the tin tray, the baking tray underneath, and because that's metal, that will retain the heat for a little while, and it will make everything nice and warm so that as I'm working, okay, uh, this will retain the heat, and it will allow me to apply the wax more easily and spread it through the cotton more easily and more effectively so that I won't get any like lumpy bits or use more than I need to. So that's now nice and warm, all right? So I'm just gonna put that back over there. So working quickly then, um, I'm gonna leave that there, I think, am I? Yes, working quickly, I've just got, I'm just gonna show you, I've just got my paintbrush in here, okay? It's nice and liquidy as you can see and I've had my paintbrush in here for a while so my paintbrush is warm and it's got the very hot wax on it, okay? So I'm just gonna put that back on the hob out of shot. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna work quite quickly and I'm just going to paint, let me put it in the middle so that the Instagrammers can see. Can you see I'm working quite quickly and I'm just spreading this over the piece of cotton as quickly as I can until I feel like there isn't any more left on my brush. OK, so you don't want too much of it. You want enough so that you feel like it's gone all the way through the cotton. OK, so keeping your fingers out the way, I'm now going to go back over into the wax. I'm going to get some more. And remember, I've got everything melted together here. So this has already got my sunflower oil and my resin all melted into it. It smells absolutely divine. OK, so I'm taking care not to actually touch this because I know it's really, really hot. If you're worried about that, you could wear some protective gloves. I would recommend using everything that doesn't matter. Doesn't matter like an old baking sheet and an old pair of gloves and an old paintbrush because, you know, and wear some old clothes or a protective apron because you don't want to get wax on things that are important. Right now, I'm going to swivel this round. OK. Um, I've gone up to, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, I've gone up to about there so far, so that bit's done. It's very quick. Once you've got the um, wax melted with the resin and everything, um, you know, then it's really just a case of splashing it on. So that, that's, not splashing, painting it carefully on. Um, so that's the long-winded bit at the beginning, is getting everything melted and set up. Once you've got it, the... Um, the resin melted into this, it's really very quick. So again, I'm going to work quickly here and I'm just going to carry on this bit here, joining it up. OK, now make sure you're putting enough on so that it does travel all the way through the cotton. OK, I've got loads on here, actually, I can see. 
Um, and then I'm going to show you in a minute, I'm going to show you a way of removing the excess. All right. Now, if you're worried that this is slipping and you don't want to um, hold it with your fingers because you're worried, use something else to hold it with. Okay. Just get another utensil and hold it in place. And any utensils that you do use, I've just been keeping my spoon there in, in, a, in a mug of very hot water. There we go. I think we're completely coated now. All right. Um, I've been keeping my uh, spoon in a, in a mug of very hot water here that I've like just boiled the kettle because then that's warm as well. Anything you use, keep it warm. So if you are using the pallet knife method, it's a good idea to start off with that in a jug of very, very hot water because it's metal, it will keep the heat. And then as you dip it into the wax and spread it across, it's warm, the wax is warm, your fabric's warm, the tray is warm, and it's going to solidify more slowly and it's going to let you spread it out. When we first did this at home a couple of months ago, we didn't do any of that pre-warming and we used a pallet knife like it says in the instructions and we found it quite hard to spread it through. So I really recommend keeping everything warm. Okay, so this, I can now pick this up, peel it off the grease-proof paper, okay? It's pretty much done, okay? It's come through to the back a little bit. But what I'm gonna do now is gonna show you my alternative to putting it in the oven. So the instructions here say, put it in the oven for a couple of minutes, let it all spread out, okay? Obviously I don't have an oven here. So all I'm gonna do is I'm going to just remove my tray from under here. And I'm just going to grab another piece of grease proof paper. Let me just, strange noise was me putting the tray down. Okay. I'm just gonna take my other piece of grease proof paper and I'm just gonna pop this on top. All right, okay. Now I'm gonna get my iron. God, I'm so hot, <laughs> so much heat going on. And I'm just going to, as you can see, as soon as I start ironing this, um, you can see it all starting to melt again. So I'm just gonna do that over it for a couple of times like that. So if you had any of it uneven, that should have evened it all out. So now, can you see, as I peel this off, I've got a lot of the excess here is on my greaseproof paper. And I'm gonna show you a method of retrieving that in a minute. Um, what you can do now is you could take your palette knife and you could use that to just spread while it's still wet. If you've got any bits that are, I mean, the iron should have done this for you anyway, to be honest. But if you need to, you could just spread it through more. And then I'm just going to peel it off that way as well. And now I can see that's completely coated. And literally just me doing this now for a couple of minutes, it'll be dry and literally ready to use. All right. Now, I've done a few of these now and I've realised that if I scrape too much of the wax off and get very, very sort of minimal amounts left in it, it doesn't have as much grip on dishes as if it's got a little bit more in it. Let me just put this down just for a second somewhere like there, um, just to, to dry. So I've got two examples here. This one, I scraped a lot of the wax off. Now, it's still... Of beeswax wrap but it, it's it's not quite as sticky I would say and if I'm trying to attach it to a dish it doesn't have quite as much grip to it and then I've done another one that does feel a little bit stickier that's got more of the wax still in it it's a very boring one I just did with some calico just as a try out and I feel like this has got more staying power okay so you don't want to get too much of the wax that's like a fine line you don't want it like super sticky so that it comes off of your hands every time you touch it but you need enough so that it will grip to your bowl that you're putting it around and of course once you put this in the fridge as well it will harden and stay put um, and if you're if you're having trouble with things uh staying put around a bowl I'd, I'd go for making slightly bigger ones so that they wrap completely underneath as well and then it will be more airtight you can always put a rubber band around it as well 
Um, and obviously bigger ones are great for, uh, you know, like if you're doing sandwiches, you're not going to get many sandwiches in there. So yeah, it makes, it makes sense to do some bigger ones as well, if you've got enough. What I want to just show you now though, is if I just get my greaseproof paper back, there's quite a lot of excess wax on here. Now, if you're struggling uh, having enough for your project, because it says there's enough for three pieces, but if you feel like you've used more than you should, you can then take your palette knife and just scrape this off, okay? Alternatively, you could use a credit card, an old credit card or something like that, and scrape it off. Can you see here, overhead, yeah? Um, and then all I was doing was I was just literally putting this back in the pan um, and reusing it. I mean, it, it's not a huge amount, but you should be surprised actually. I got a sort of a ball of it by just continuously scraping this. Can you see? Look, I'm getting quite a bit. I won't bore you with doing any more of that, but I would recommend doing that, okay? And then you know that you haven't, there's none that's gone to waste and you've got it all back in your pan. The other thing I've been doing, which is another top tip, is I've been, I've got a dedicated bowl and pan, let's put it like that, and paintbrush. And um, in between times of making these, I've literally just turned the heat off. I've let, let me just show you, let me come back over here and get my little mat back and put this back down. Um, can you see I've got those little bits in there now? Have I got it in the right place, Chris? Yeah. yeah, I've got those little bits in there now and they're just melting back down again. But yeah, in between times I've just left this and it's solidified in the dish, in the pan with the paintbrush stuck in it. And I would almost recommend just popping that somewhere, you know, once you've taken it off the heat, leave it to cool completely stick it in the cupboard or wherever in a box and then next time you want to make some more it's like ready to go and all you need to do is just reheat it again and actually once you've got it all uh, melted down then that's much easier to then reheat you, have, you don't get that stickiness from the resin again once it's all a complete thing and it's got the sunflower in it or oil in it already um, and you, I'm just paranoid here about oh, I'm not very good with irons am I it's no. not it's not my thing Iron ironing is a mystery to you really isn't it <laughs> ironing is a mystery to me i just i having said that though i did iron my top this morning but then i ended up having to google um how to get how rid to of switch an iron on. no i ended up having to google how to get rid of shiny spots off your fabric because i don't know what this is made of but I put the iron directly on it, only right at the end. I was ironing it over a tea towel and then right, anyway, this is boring. Right at the end, they've got some shiny spots. Anyway, I, apparently you just, you just steam. Shh, and it get, yeah, sorry, got a question. We've got a question. Yes, um, I need to blow my nose, sorry. Hay fever, uh, from not From Scotty Dad virus. too on Instagram. From Spotty Dad, did you? Scotty. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was thinking that was a weird name. Scotty Dad too. On Scotty Instagram. Dad too. Hello. What would happen if you used a candle made from paraffin? Oh no! Don't Bad ask me idea, questions I like that. that. We're I, these, these are kits that we sell. Okay. Don't paraffin ask. Paraffin burns. Surely that can't be a good thing. I don't think that would be a good thing, and I don't. I don't know if you're asking me about what you can use instead of these kits. That's not my area of expertise. Remember, right? it's food. You're wrapping food yeah, up. Yeah, you're wrapping paraffin, food up. I mean, no. if you're not going to use one of our kits, I would recommend using beeswax that you get from somewhere, mixed with pine resin that you get from somewhere, mixed with some sunflower oil, okay? I do know that there's a vegan version of this where people use, I want to say, carnauba wax, if that's a thing. Okay, but I mean beeswax. We're all about beeswax at the moment, you know. And um, so, no cars wax. No, no floor wax. <laughs> no, no other no, sort of wax. No, no sex, as in the sex wax. What they put on surfboards. Oh, that okay. Uh, no, no other sorts of wax. All right. Uh, this is a beeswax thing. And the company that we um, use to make these kits, that supply us with these kits, are called Filberts, and they're in Dorset. What are you laughing? Just uh, and they're in Dorset, Filberts of Dorset, and they are basically beekeepers, and they're all about the bees, um, and they make these these kits from their beeswax in Dorset, British beeswax. So yeah, I mean, if you're not going to use one of our kits, pass. 
Does that, does that answer that question? Hopefully. So definitely not earwax. Definitely. Oh, no, please stop. Right. OK. Any more sensible questions? It's not questions? me. Oh. It's the people. Oh, OK. I thought that was you. No, definitely not. Oh, that's vile. All right. Any more sensible questions about beeswax wraps? Oh, what was I saying? Oh, I was talking about ironing. Oh, yeah, I don't really iron anything um, other than if I absolutely have to uh, iron a, an item of clothing and then I'll only iron it just before I wear it. So I, I have never had an ironing pile. I don't even know what that is. I mean, I just wash stuff, hang it up to dry and then put it away. Claire Kirby yes. on Facebook, Hello, Claire. very sensible, obviously yes. an ironer. Oh, right, yeah. Oh, iron no, it from the inside out. Yeah, do you know what? That's so sensible. Although I think it's this sort of fabric that would have maybe still been shiny even if I'd done that. And I had done so well because I was ironing it over a tea towel. And then just at the last minute, I thought, oh, I'll just do that bit. Nah. Anyway, it's fine. You probably can't even see it. But I think it's viscose, isn't it? Some fabrics. Uh, anyway, we digress. Back to fabric wraps. So um, I feel like um i've pretty much run through it i could do another one do you where are we for time yep should i just quickly do another one or is everyone pretty much up to speed i think you should do another one okay then let me do another one let me get um, my tray back then oh. oh i know it's very exciting right let's put the tray back let's put the first sheet of that back there and then i've got another spiffing piece of fabric okay this is another one that we sell which i just think is quite nice actually for a wrap anyway um and i have washed this one and then i have cast out with my pinking shears and as we know i've got my mixture ready to go all right i feel a bit weird because this is like further away than I would have it normally if I was just sitting here. I'd have it right next to me here. But because we've got the overhead camera, it's like a foot further forward than I would have it normally. So I feel like I'm like leaning forward. Anyway, right, so my mixture, I've just got this electric hob here on number one. Not that means anything to anyone. So it's just like keeping it just nicely warm. So just let me reiterate again that you don't want this on a fast boil underneath here. You don't want it like getting overly hot, all right? So it just needs to be nicely melted, okay? And then my paintbrush is already in here. I've just used, I'm using a painter's like decorating paintbrush. Don't use a tiny little one. Use a nice fat one. Make sure it's clean though. You don't want any paint entering into this situation. So a nice clean paintbrush that you can maybe keep for doing this because it's going to be very difficult to get the wax out of it at the end. I'll give you a couple of pointers about cleaning things in a second. Right, let's just do it. Okay, so I'm going to just work quickly with my wax. Oh, I haven't ironed it first. Okay, well, let's do an example of what happens if you don't iron it first. There, you see. It's actually, no, this is interesting. It's good that I haven't done that. Look, so that's solidified a lot more quickly because I haven't ironed this first. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick my other piece of um, grease proof over the top and I'm just going to give this the, the first iron that I talked to you about right at the beginning. Obviously, it's just going to remelt that bit of wax that I, I've just put on. So this makes such a difference. And I just learned that this was the thing to do just through trial and error really so i'm warming up my grease proof paper underneath i'm warming up my fabric and i'm warming up the baking tray and obviously the metal holds the heat um just so you know i have got lots of protective cloth underneath this tray on my table so that my plastic tablecloth doesn't melt and i've created my own little sort of ironing board underneath okay so just doing that, just for a minute or so, so everything is nice and warm, okay? And what I'll do now is I'll just take that, you can see where it's done its stuff here, where I painted on. Right, so let me just now remove that bit of greaseproof paper, and then I'm going to carry on. All right, so now let's see what a difference that makes <clears throat> when I add this, look. Now see how that's not solidifying quite so quickly? It's giving me time to work it more and time to spread it more, which is so much better. I think it makes um, um, it makes you use slightly less of the wax. Uh, so it goes a little bit further in the long run. I'm just trying, because I'm not directly over it. I'm having trouble seeing where I'm painting it. Okay, so again, just work it quickly or as quickly as you can without, without splashing it everywhere. 
Um, I mean, if you are doing this with older children, do keep supervising them. Don't leave them alone with it. Don't wander off and leave this on the hob with it still on, okay? Make sure that you are being attentive at all times because we don't want any nasty accidents or visits to a &E. That would be a very bad thing. Okay, so I've got plenty on there. All right. And I feel like using this paintbrush is definitely the way to go because you use so much less. I feel like when we first did this with the palette knife, we were using way more than we needed to. All right. So now being getting even more of it back uh, and, and scraping it off again, get your, your greaseproof paper over the top as well. I can feel that it's actually still really warm, me putting my hands on it here. It's hand hot here where I've just painted it on. So do be careful if you're touching this, don't burn yourself, okay? Greaseproof paper over the top and then I'm just gonna get the iron and I'm going to basically iron off the excess. Um, now the alternative to this, which is actually in the instructions in the kit, is to pop it in the oven for a couple of minutes. We'll kind of do the same thing um, and it will just melt the wax again and it will just spread it out and then Peeling it off now, it's gone all the way through. Let's get rid of that piece. So that's got loads of wax on it there that I can scrape off and reuse. And then peeling this one off, okay. It's still quite warm. And then just leaving this to dry. So it will just dry nice and easily just in the air, okay. But obviously it will stiffen if you put it in the fridge. Okay, so then I've got, I can see I've actually got loads of wax on that one. So if I leave it for a second, I'll just start to scrape it off. Now, if uh, these start to lose their grip or waxiness over time, you can re-iron them um, and re-sort of distribute the, the wax. Question. Questions, questions, questions. Facebook, Hillary is asking, does the fabric have a hem? No. Or is it just cut with pinking shears? Yes, yes, you missed that right at the beginning. I was just saying right at the beginning, where are they? They are aloof. Oh, they're here, look. <laughs> I was just saying right at the beginning that I cut all my fabric with pinking shears, all right? She also asks, does it have to be cotton? Yes, 100% cotton, okay? Not too thick, so not like heavy, cotton fab uh, heavy curtain fabric. Just make it lightweight, 100% cotton, Cut it with pinking shears, no need to hem it. Make them whatever size you like, based on the square meterage of the kit overall. I can't remember what it is now, but it's the one with the fabric. Obviously, you've just got the fabric in the kit, but the other one that comes enough to make six 25 centimeter squares, whatever the square meter of that is, you could make larger ones or whatever. Yes. Uh, question from uh, Instagram from the uh, Elf Times. Oh, yes. The Elf Times. Yes, no, that, that name rings a bell. Yes. Oh, what's good. what's okay, the, the, the question? The question is, yes. do they last for a long time or do you have to do the wax? Do, do you have to re-wax? Yeah, them? I mean, That's it depends how, how often you use them, I guess. Um, but if you find over time that they do deteriorate and they're not as grippy, you could repaint a bit more on or start off by just ironing them between two pieces of greaseproof paper or just pop them in the oven and see what happens. Um, I was also just going to show you actually, this one that I did earlier feels like it's got quite a lot of wax on the back here. I can sort of feel it. So if that's the case and you feel like there's too much on there, you can not only scrape the greaseproof paper, but now it's drier, I can actually scrape some of the wax off the fabric itself, all right? So that would just give me um, a smoother finish and then I would re-iron it again after I've done that. Yes. Various sort of talking of soya or soy candle yes, wax yes. might be okay. Yes. Uh, yes. If you don't do want, you have to use the resin. Um, I think it's uh, yeah because it makes it more tacky. I think you do have to use resin. And the other thing that's good about our kits is they have white beeswax pellets in them. A lot of the beeswax pellets you buy are sort of honey coloured. And that will discolour your fabric. Well, depending on the fabric you're using, if it's got white areas or light areas to it, it may yellow the, f the look of it, which doesn't really matter, but it's worth bearing in mind. So we have white beeswax pellets and the resin. I have to say the pine resin makes them smell divine. Uh, but yeah, it, it adds the tackiness. So this is obviously a good combination here in the kit. All we're adding to it is a little bit of the sunflower oil. 
and then you're good to go. OK, um, but I have no experience of making it, making them with anything different. So I'm not really at liberty to um, advise you on, on, it, on using anything different. However, I'm given to believe there are other options if you're vegan and also that you don't use you don't have to use sunflower oil. You can use some other oils as well. But just, I, I, you know, I've not experienced using other oils, so I would be a bit hesitant because I don't know what their tipping points are. But the sunflower oil works well. Any more for anyone? Sounds like terms and conditions read the small print. Well, do you know what? My glasses are so, so dirty. I actually oh, can't, then. yeah. Have you got beeswax resin I on don't it? know. Um, I feel, yeah, like this is slightly out of the norm of what I normally do and show people and there's slightly more <laughs> health and safety issues with it, okay? And obviously you're going to put, be putting it around your food, so I'm very hesitant about recommending anything different because it's not what is in our kits and it's not what I've experienced. So I'm, I don't want anyone suing me for doing something that they shouldn't have done. So um, here I am on YouTube showing you how to make our kits, really. And that's it. Uh, that's where my advice would end. So as this is cooling down a bit, I just want to show you, actually, without dripping it everywhere. Um, as this is cooling down a bit in the... Actually, let me bring the, the saucepan over. Can you see how it's sort of solidifying on my paintbrush like this? And you would need to increase the heat again to get this all completely melted before you carried on using it. So I just want you to be aware of that. So it does go like this when it starts to solidify. So um, I'm, I'm actually going to turn that off now because I'm not going to make any more. But yeah, if you were just making a whole load, you would just keep it on a very low heat, just enough so you don't get that. So it stays liquid and then you can carry on using it. I've got loads there, actually. Maybe I do need to make some. People I'm just going to see your hot plate. Do you want to, Do you want to see on, my hot plate? On, on hey, listen, my hot Instagram. plate is um, a cheapy, cheapy hot plate. I was going to say that you could take camping, but I am the world's worst camper and I never go camping. And also, I'm actually thinking, oh, here we go. This is where I spill everything everywhere. Here's my hot plate. All right. Uh oh. I'm actually thinking that uh, you wouldn't use this when you were camping because it's electric. Oh, I guess people have electric electricity when they camp, don't they? Only you, Gillian, because I have to run an extension leaf in the house. <laughs> when so we go camping, we go. I have to like recreate my home in the tent and have like a bed that's a normal height. And that um, one time we went camping. <laughs> that one one time we went camping when it rained solidly. That's why I never go camping. Anyway, let's not talk about camping. But yeah, this is a stove. Um, that's just plug a, a plug-in stove. I'm sure you'll all have your stoves at home in your kitchens that you can use. Uh, but this is the equivalent of electric one and it's, I've just got from one to six. So it's just been sitting on one. That's it really. There's nothing special about it. It's just like put the pan on top of it. Uh, if you missed the beginning um, of this tutorial, I was, what I was saying right at the beginning is uh, don't have a, a heat proof bowl that's just sitting just above the water. Don't have the water on a fast boil. It just needs to be just off simmer so it's warm enough to heat the wax through but you don't want it boiling really fast um and just you know be careful use an oven mitt don't let kids go near it don't put your fingers in it and so on can we make pancakes <laughs> you, we could actually yeah we could make pancakes and then we could wrap them up in our beeswax wraps and take them on a picnic Yeah, he's yes. Thinking, yes. I was just thinking. You were thinking, thinking that, that through, weren't you? Yes. I was. Yes. I don't like pancakes. Oh, but you like picnics. Yeah, I don't like pancakes. No, so. he's not. He's not a massive pancake fan. I am. Um. Anyway, <laughs> back to beeswax wraps. All right. Well, so that's basically it. It's really very straightforward. Um. And aren't they wonderful? If you want to know what fabric I was using here. Well, the, both of these we sell actually. This this one we sell in a little fat quarter like this. And then all of the Odile fabrics, the French ones arrived last week. And um, this is the yellow one. Okay, these are fat quarters. Um, but you basically, you can use any, any cotton. I would recommend washing it first though, because I think it helps the, the wax travel through to the other side. But that's good to go now. Let me wrap my bowl to show you. Oh, look at that. Fabulous. So like I say, if you want it to go underneath, you'd make, need to make a little, a bigger one. 
and then obviously as well when you put it in the fridge it sort of hardens and stays put a bit better but that's them done very quick actually once you've got it all ready it's very quick so any more for any more question wise are we there how are we doing for time you're not speaking no. okay i so, was looking i was reading so next week christopher's got a job i know how dare he uh what are you doing the baftas Shh. oh why is it a secret that it's yes. on what's the secret everything well i would imagine can't talk about it oh sorry i would imagine who's won is a secret but everyone knows it's happening right anyway okay let's not talk about that but anyway he's busy on saturday um so we're going to do our next tutorial next Sunday, okay? Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. And I'm actually going to show you, and it's very topical, so if you're watching this in a few years' time, you'll think, meh. Um, I'm going to show you. <laughs> oh, what? We have got a question. Oh, okay. Did I Liz remove Taylor. my mask? Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor. Go ahead. How do you clean after use? Clean, oh yes, I was going to talk about cleaning up. So I would recommend leaving all this to just solidify and just leave it for your beeswax, beeswax wrap making. But if you do need to clean stuff, the best thing to do is to boil the kettle. Uh, say, so say you're cleaning this spoon, okay? Boil the kettle, uh, fill the mug up with water and then get the, the waxy spoon into it, okay? And let the wax melt in the water, all right? And then take it out and clean it off with um, a piece of kitchen roll or something like that. The, the, the key thing here is not to block up your kitchen sink, isn't it, Chris? Absolutely. I've done that before. All right. And then once you've got all the wax floating in the water here, I would pour it through a sieve. OK, when you pour it, so the water will go down the drain, the wax will catch in the sieve and then hopefully you can scrape the solidified wax out and put it in the bin. All right. Yes. Quick question. Yes. Uh, the other the other. Well, two things to say there. Yes. One, you're going to get all your wax in your sieve. That's not a great thing. Oh, Chris maybe, loves cleaning up. I knew you'd have a comment about use, this. Maybe you could use a bit of kitchen roll or something. Would some you like to come and talk material. about the clearing no, up? No, 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 Are no, you no, sure? No. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, well, yes. But oh, I see. Uh, the other Does. question was, <laughs> how do you <laughs> clean... Go on. The other question from yeah. Sally Robinson yes. on Facebook was... Yes. How do you clean the actual uh, beeswax wrap oh, right. after you've used yeah, it? Yes, sorry. Yes, I did say that earlier. I said you would just put it under the tap. Lukewarm. Don't tell me. Tell Sally. Lukewarm to cool water. Okay, a bit of washing up liquid. Wash, 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 wash with the, the washing up brush. Don't use really hot water because it will melt the wax. Don't put it in the dishwasher because it will melt the wax. Keep it cool. Wash, 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 wash. Dry, 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 dry. And it's clean. OK, so that's not a problem. I mean, uh, and don't put it against meat or fish. I said that at the beginning if you missed that. But that's how you clean them. All right. So just cool, washing up liquid. Not a problem. Leave them to dry. And then anything else that you're washing, as in that you've used. I mean, you shouldn't have any wax in the pan of water, so that's fine. This dish here, I mean, it will solidify. You could take it out as a whole chunk, actually, once it's solidified. You're not going to be able to clean that paintbrush and use it for painting again. Just leave it for your beeswax wrap, wrap making, OK? And then, like I said, with the spoon, um, you know, once this is cool, you could spoon out the, the bits of wax, all right, once it's all cooled. But that's how I was cleaning it yesterday, pouring it through something to sieve it. You could always pour it through some muslin or calico or something where the, the water can drip through and you get the wax left. You just don't want to block up your kitchen sink with wax. That's really the main thing, isn't it, Christopher? All the dishwasher come to that. Don't be blocking that up with wax or you'll get in trouble. So uh, Mr Stormzy on, on Instagram is, is asking when you're going to rap. <laughs> oh my goodness. You really don't want to listen to me rapping. That would be bad. Um, but thank you for suggesting that you might want to listen to it. I appreciate that. So, yes, just going back to next week then. So what I'm proposing is to do a tutorial about how to make a really simple face mask with minimal sewing. No one wants to get into a complicated sewing situation and complicated patterns. This starts life as a rectangle. OK, there's a lot of pins. You need a lot of dressmaking pins. And then it's one lot of sewing around the edge at the end. You need half a metre of elastic. 
and you need a piece of cotton that measures about 22 centimetres by 45 centimetres. That is it and some pins. You can either machine it or you can hand sew it in a matching thread. But it's what I'm going to show you is designed to be super simple. We can add a nose bar wire, which I've got in mine here, and we can also leave the bottom open to insert a filter. So we can spray the front and make the front uh, water resistant. You can add a filter if you want to, and then you've got a third layer behind. So it's fully washable, again, cotton, and looks rather fetchingly like this. I will now be slightly muffled, okay? And because it's got the pleats, it fully covers under your chin, above your nose, there's the nose wire and you're all completely covered. All right. So I'm going to show you how to make that next Sunday, not Saturday. Um, and if you and this is one of the pieces of Odile as well. This is the turquoise one, but any cotton will do or any of your fabrics that you've got already will do. And that's that. Any more for any more? Um. Katie Cox at home. I work with beeswax a huge amount. Oh, Katie, yes, you do. And there are only two things you can do. Katie knows about beeswax. Chuck it in the garden somewhere, or two soda crystals. It's the only thing. Oh, okay. I, uh, presumably, that's to remove soda crystals. To oh, I see. To remove. Oh, okay, things. okay, yeah. I mean, you know, um, I was scraping, scraping off the, the the paper, but yeah, I mean. With like with any wax, you know, or candle wax, it's difficult to get off things once you've got it onto things. So, so be careful you don't drip it onto anything that you're wearing. That's your favourite outfit, and wear an apron. And be careful you don't drip it onto, I don't know, your tablecloth or anything. And make sure you're only using the fabric you want to. And obviously, any old bits of cotton you've got at home. So, um, old sheets or old bits of cotton that you've had lying around for ages, you can use any of that kind of thing to make into beeswax wraps. And that's why we sell this second kit, which is for using your own fabric. So you just get the beeswax and the pine resin, um, and then you can use your own fabric. So hopefully that's um, been informative for everybody. And you're all now going to spend the rest of the day making beeswax wraps, maybe. Yes? Yay. Are we done? Is there any more? Are there any more questions, Chris? Uh, no. No. All right. In that case, I will see you next Sunday for mask making weirdness. <laughs> I never thought I'd be doing a mask making tutorial, but there we are. I believe it's going to be quite useful. Um, and I think it's important that we all wear one for the time being. So I shall see you then. Yes, put yours on. Put yours on. That's not very nice. There we go. It's only you and me in here. All right. See you then. Then. Bye.